Let's not fill a job pants. From lifestyle, fitness, beauty, travel, relationships, and self-care, Steph's got you covered. Welcome to your safe space, where you can stop what you're doing, relax, and let someone else do the heavy lifting for once. This is the Luxury Dropout Podcast with your host, Stephanie Joplin. What's up, Dropout? Stephanie Joplin here with another episode of the Luxury Dropout Podcast. Today, I have two very hot ladies joining me all the way from LA. They are Jen Fakara and Nicole Sudica. They have their very own podcast called Hotter in Person. And they basically came up with it on a whim during a discussion that they're both just hotter in person, but they're truly spectacular people. They're funny, witty. Their podcast is on point to talk about a lot of dating issues that we face in our 20s and 30s. I think that they offer a lot of insight into the female brain and a lot of really what goes on behind the scenes. So gentlemen, I think this will be a great episode for you as well. We go pretty in detail here. So definitely I would say under 18 viewer and listener discretion is advised for this episode, which means, you know, we're going to get into some tea. So I hope you enjoy this episode of the luxury dropout. Welcome back, fellow dropouts, to the Luxury Dropout Podcast with me, Stephanie Joplin. Today, I am joined by the hotties from Hotter in Person Podcast, Jen and Nicole. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. Sure. Still I'm hungover fine. from yeah, my birthday party. Yeah, it was your party. birthday. Yes. Happy it's birthday. The first time I had like real glam, I was like, I'm actually, I'm beautiful. Like, holy <laughs> yeah well you were beautiful and you looked so so good I mean I, I like, couldn't I couldn't breathe like when I saw your pictures I was like I was you look like, so good I'm oh, not ugly I'm just poor like I need yeah. like, <laughs> no that's it though we're not ugly we're just we don't have money to be pretty <laughs> so Jen was she hotter in person Oh yeah. I mean, she looked amazing. I also, that was my first time drinking with Nicole. And so now I know what I'm in for. Oh my, I was going to say that is probably quite the experience. I was being knocked out by dinner. Oh (laughs) yeah. Perfect. I'm really, I'm so happy. Did you, those things that you had on your ears make it back home or? um... Honestly, I have no idea where the ears went. The hair came with me. I was so excited. I love this hairstylist, Glenn. He was like, I knew you'd want to be a hoe. So I brought you hair extensions. I was like, yes. Love it. (laughs) We love the hoe hair. That's awesome. So tell me about this theme about your of your birthday it was so cool so uh, Jen got me hooked on the books they're called a court of thorns and roses and then one of my friends had already read it and then I got all my other friends on it and we've all become so fucking obsessed with it and I yeah. was like I'm doing my birthday party on this theme <laughs> and everyone just went above and beyond because I was just buying present I mean decorations on Amazon and my one friend's like I'll get a decorator and then one friend's like I'll get you glam and one friend's like I'll do get your nails done so I got really cool nails I saw that I got like a face painter and glitter I was like oh my god I've never been so special I just feel like LA parties like you guys really love a theme like that's the thing yeah I love a theme yeah here it's like there'll be a theme and like some people will get dressed up for it. And then other people will just wear their athleisure. Like, it's not like that important. It's not like, it's not that somebody if enforces it, but it's not, I don't know. It's not important, but there you guys just love a theme. And I, I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. I yeah. swear there, the glitter that I got to put in the drinks was drugs because I don't know what happened. It was like, we were all sober. <laughs> it was just then like all of a no, sudden. No. Bye. Fairy wine. <laughs> yeah. Oh my oh, yeah. God. Okay. And the tequila was blue. So when we would do shots, I was like, <clears throat> oh, it's blue. It'll be sweet. Just because in my mind, I'm like, blue, candy, sweet. It was tequila. Like I would do <laughs> these shots every single time. I'm like, it's going to be different this time. No, it was straight tequila. Oh my God. <laughs> blue, sparkly tequila. Wow. Okay. I'm into this. So any escapades or what? No, nothing. No. Oh, there was. So my Italian stallion. Yes. Um, okay. I've seen I'm, it and it legitimately, it's, it legitimately is. I, I'm yeah. So I'm does, scared. 
so when I had that hoe hair and I was like, I'm going to take a nude of myself with this hair covering my tits because that's always why I wanted long hair was to cover my tits in photos. So I sent him one and he sent me a voice note back and the Italian. Oh, my God. (laughs) He was like, I can't wait to see you. You are so hot. And I was just like and I'm so drunk. So I was trying to send a voice note back to him. Yeah. And it goes, what do I say? What do I say? And I sent the fucking voice note and I'm like, how do I delete this? How do I delete this? And then I sent like five of them being like, how do I delete this? How do I delete this? And then finally <laughs> I figured out how to fucking unsend clip. I wanted to die. Was but... this on Instagram or where? Yeah. We like you DM'd were sending that. the nudes on Insta? That's bold. Yeah, I, I know, like it's, it. It's bold, yes. Okay, well, great segue. I wanted to talk about nudes, actually. Um, Yeah, yeah, okay. So I know that we, you know, we all have the same philosophy about nudes and that's like, we do it because we love ourselves, not for validation, right? What do you think, are, are you guys of the opinion that, you know, like, are you scared? Like when you're sending nudes, like, do you think to yourself, oh, this is gonna get out or are you just okay with it? Cause your body looks so good. I'm like, if my nudes got out, it would be the best thing the world could see, honestly. (laughs) I just don't put my face in them. I try not to put my face in it. Um, And then I'm also of the mind of like, I am a woman making a conscious decision to take this photo. I'm proud of my body. I'm proud of this photo. Like if someone wants to be an asshole and leak it, or if it somehow got out, well, God bless, because you are all now lucky yes. to risk to witness it I don't know I feel like that's how you have to think of it because I love taking them they make me feel so good I love when I send them and I get a good reaction so it's like if this is something that makes me feel good I don't even want to think about the negative part of it yeah and that's like it's, I almost feel like it's like across that bridge if you ever need to get to it but it's also like you're welcome yeah you know I guess. are we are we past the whole I mean not talking about a sex tape, but are we past the whole revenge porn thing with regards to nudes? Do you think like are, uh, are women, are women like us just okay if it gets out now? Cause honest, we look, we, we're happy. I mean, for me too, I'm like, God didn't give me these tits for them to be hidden. But like, even on drunk nights with my friends, everyone knows my tits come out. So <laughs> I'm like titty shots. Everyone's taking titty shots between my tits. So like, honestly, if they got out, sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking, I, you know, go ahead. I think I have sent some very like porny ones, but like I try to make them more like classy. There's like one or two that I'd pass away if that got out, but it's to people I trust versus like, yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. I think gauging who you're sending it to as yeah. well, like what you're sending and to whom I think makes a difference for sure. Like yeah. I wouldn't send like a vagina anything to oh, someone that yeah. I, I didn't trust <laughs> like tits for days like if yeah. I, I would sunbathe yeah. but like if I go to Europe I will go to a, a topless beach and yeah. let them free so for me boobs don't really mean anything but like vagina is for like a yeah. select I don't think for you I don't think I could one ex was like send me a picture of your vagina in the mirror with your legs spread open and I was like absolutely not like that is where I draw the line like I'm just not a vagina person <laughs> so you're like I can't even look at my own okay I'm vagina Thank yeah you. so I'm like <laughs> that's where I draw the line for my nudes so I guess I do have yeah one, I like have a love-hate relationship with my vagina so it's like I don't <laughs> want to photograph her because yeah. I don't know she's camera it's, shy it's okay I feel like porn has made me hate my, my vagina and I feel like I need to be nicer to her you know like it's just I need to be a little bit nicer yeah. Well, you, I think we do. I, I agree though. I mean, I feel like I, whenever I have taken a picture of my vagina, I've always had to, like, I have one labia that's like a little bit like further out than the other. So I kind of cover that one with like one finger. It's like, I'm conscious about the one labia. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I don't look like what they're watching on Pornhub. So like, yeah. But then again, I'm also like, no guy has ever done anything other than worship it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's exactly. just me in my own head. It's like, who told That's what me I'm that? Saying. Nobody. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I don't think any guy has ever been like, oh, one of her labia is slightly yeah. bigger. No. Yeah. No also for that. me, like when I watch porn and you see a girl's vagina, I'm just Bleh. And like, it's up. Oh, I'm like, I don't want to send a photo because I'm like, <laughs> I look at it and I'm not like, that's hot. Like, I just, 
Uh, yeah, no, I actually really am into gay porn. I like, I don't know why, but I just like seeing two. Really? I, do. Gay porn. I love a threesome. Like I a- do two lesbians because I feel like the girls know where to go. Whereas like the guys <laughs> don't know how to touch a woman in porn. But you so don't like vaginas, but you're watching two. <laughs> yeah. Nicole, <laughs> what? what in the world? My brain is a weird thing. It's okay. I accept you. <laughs> oh, I get it. Sometimes I'm just like, I just need to watch two women actually getting play. Like, because when you're watching a guy going down on a girl in porn, you're like, like she's faking it for the camera. Yeah. There's no way that feels good. He's just like a dog <laughs> licking it. Like there's nothing happening. It's yeah. Like add a finger, add a little rhythm. <laughs> but like the women know what they're doing. They sure do. I, I have seen, like, if you actually look into... I guess it's like passionate lovemaking or something like that. Like that type of like, you know, people that are in love, like that kind of fantasy of porn, that's when they eat that really well. I'm not, yeah. I don't know, I say the P word <laughs> on my show yet. I haven't really quite figured it out, but I, I, haven't, mean, decided. I, should, I haven't decided. I, can, I guess I've been saying the F bomb a ton of times, so it doesn't really matter. Kitty, <laughs> that's an ugly name too. A kitty. The, other night, the peach. The, yeah, the, the peach, other night. The we peach. Were- the other night we were drunk and I was like, you're meow, meow. Yeah. <laughs> you're meow, meow. I think I've said that before too. Or you're, mm-mm. you're, mm-mm. It's showing. that's so silly. We shouldn't ever, we should just say pussy and be done with it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's just like a weird word. It's a so, weird word. So I was going to tell you guys that, uh, and I think you, you know, this story cause we, you know, we've chatted before, um, you know, we chatted yeah. and, um, I did have a nude leaked one time on Twitter and thank God somehow if I Google, if I Google my name, it doesn't come up. So I don't know how that didn't keep traction, but I was texting with this former NFL player and I sent him my boobs and he got mad at me because I was posting screenshots of our combo and how needy he was being and just like really obsessive and weird. Yeah. And he caught wind of it and someone sent them to him. And so he got revenge by posting my boobs. And so I immediately called my mom because I was freaking out and I just was so worried she would see it. And that's like, you know, the epitome of who I don't want to disappoint is like my mother. I, I don't care about anyone else <laughs> except for my mom and my dad, you know? And so she literally was like, oh, Stephanie, she's like, don't worry. You have amazing breasts. And I was like, wow, what a great reaction from my mother saving the day. Like I was bawling my eyes out and she, she made me feel so much better. So it got taken down almost immediately, but still. I just don't understand how that reaction is comparable to like you posting screenshots of your conversation. I will never understand how men think that how they escalate it that way. Yes. Ever. Yes. That is completely unacceptable. And you're correct. Like apples are not oranges, but that to him was smart. He's a, he's a baby, a man baby is what he is. It's so, wild. Yeah. Well, I think and and pro athletes in general are man babies. So yeah. it's like, a they're whole- used to being coddled and mm-hmm. worshiped. And when they don't get their way, they want to throw a tantrum. Oh yeah, for sure. So in terms of like pro athletes and, and, and not necessarily pro athletes, but anyone celeb wise and DM sliding, have you guys done a ton of that? No, I'm too scared. You're too scared to do it. I do not. I shot my shot once on a dating app and I wanted to die. I used the, I was texting Jen. I was like, what do I say to this guy? And she gave me like a list of pickup lines to say, and he's an actor. And I sent him my Wi-Fi password and I was like, save this for later. Never replied. I was like, I never even got to finish my pickup line. Like no. this is the last time I ever shoot. Shot that was on Hinge. Me. Uh, no, another app. But oh, okay, I was okay. just like, Oh, I was like, no, even like on Instagram, like most people, it goes to your request. I yeah. still would probably for months would be like, no, he hasn't opened it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Jen? Oh, I will slide into any DM. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> even care. Same. I, I, w- I matched with a, a MLB player years ago on Bumble and we went back and forth for a while, but he played for in a different state. Now he's like engaged with a baby on the way, but we would Snapchat and like sext and text. Um, 
And there are some verified guys who like come in my DMs sometimes, but they're never guys that I'm interested in. It's always, it's always the guys that I'm not interested in who like get in my DMs, but um, yeah. no, I'll, I don't care. I'll slide into anyone's DMs. My thing is like, if I'm on a dating app and you put your Instagram handle in your thing, I'm not going to match with you. I'm just, and I'm interested. I'm just going to go DM you <laughs> Yeah, and you're either going to walk the walk or not. Like you have it there for a reason. So let's just see. But it's weird because I will slide into any DM and be like, yeah, what's the worst that can happen? They never respond. Yeah. But like, I'm not that chill when I'm actually dating people. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the same. Like I'm very emboldened when I'm initiating the contact and then I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same. I'm the same. Actually, like there's this guy I've been talking to back and forth. Um, he's, he's on TikTok. That's how I found him. Um, and he has a podcast. He's local in Houston. He's attractive. He's like age appropriate and, um, really like really sweet guy. Like thinks like me is very intentional with the whole dating experience. And today I just, he was asking me about, he was asking me advice about this girl he'd gone on a date with. And he was like, do you think she is, you know, giving me the brush off or is this like a legit excuse? So I was kind of giving him some advice and I ended up being like, I think you and I should go on a date. Cause I, cause I was like, why Ooh. not? Like this guy, this guy seems cool. Yeah. And he was like, can I take some time to think about it? And I was like, <gasps> ah, oh, ow. oh, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. No, but I, yeah. he was, I think he's like trying to see if he's ready for me. Cause that's, I, was, I think I was telling you guys, like, I feel like men are like okay I'm only gonna date her when I'm ready to get married like she is like a marriage type like a fuck or a marriage person like no in between and she's not just gonna fuck me so yeah you know like yeah. I have to be sure I'm ready for this first day I'm trying not to take it personally so that's how I'm thinking about it but with with keeping in mind that he always talks about like being so intentional with dating and like his motives for dating he's got a son so he's like you know very serious about his son when he had his son over the summer he took the whole month off so for social media to be with his oh son oh my god yeah what is that your cat sorry <laughs> i'm like that is not your microphone all of a sudden you're the, the tail of your cat is in your face it's like i want some screen time yeah so anyways i just thought I mean, I'd shoot my shot. Um, I got ruthlessly shot down, but that's okay. I don't feel, I don't feel embarrassed. I was like, I am totally fine giving you online dating advice and being your online friend, dude. And he was like, no, it's like, he's just like, I'm not going to take days. I just, I just want to be intentional about it and think about it. That's like our buzzword. So yay for me. <laughs> so embarrassing. Yeah. But at least you have the courage to do it. Like, yeah. that's what I feel sometimes too. It's like, I'd rather just like say what I need to say or go for it and have an answer than wonder like, what if I, what if we could have clicked, but I was too shy to ask them out because yeah. as much as I, I do abide by the, like, if he wanted to, he would. Sometimes I think there are some guys who are really shy and just, they get really in their own heads too. And like, there have been times where like, I've had crushes on guys and years later they'd be like oh I had a crush on you too I'm like yeah. well why didn't you say anything you could have I could have avoided all this therapy I'm in now and <laughs> but so I don't know I do think sometimes some guys are just like a little bit more in their head about dating than like the ones who aren't just trying to f around like right. the guys who are serious about it I think can sometimes be as neurotic as we can be about it I feel like they always admit that when they're like, engaged and about to get married <laughs> Mm -hmm. I had a crush that? on you. Yeah. We could have uh, fallen in love and had a love story for the ages, but okay, great. Well, my, my best guy friend of like eight years or whatever, he started dating this girl and I was very welcoming of her. I was like, Hey, come to my birthday party, whatever. I was super nice. And she just didn't like me. And I was like, why does this girl not like me? I'm, you know, I'm super nice to her and slowly, but surely he picked her and we fell apart. I mean, we literally did everything together. We went to the movies, went to baseball games, we went to football games, basketball games, like, um, dinner all the time. Like he came over to my house for Christmas with my family. Like we were super, super close, never touched like physically just oh friends. God. And I was like, why is she jealous? Like, I don't understand. And then literally like during COVID, he got drunk and admitted to me over the phone. He was like, he's like, yeah, I, I was in love with you. And I was like, huh? Oh my God. I was like, you had eight, eight years. Cause everybody, my family, everybody was like, 
oh yeah, he's in love with you. I was like, no, he's not. He's totally not. Cause he never indicated that ever, not once. And so he's like, why do you think I always made time for you? I'm like, cause I'm a cool, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm fun to be around. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, and then of course, now I understand why the girl was so pissed. Cause she intuitive, intuitively probably yeah. picked up on the fact that he was formerly in love with me, but you know, like you gotta shoot your shot. <laughs> You have to just yeah. because then you'll wonder what if. Yeah. And honestly, I don't think he and I were like meant to be. He's engaged to her now. Um, they bought a house together. I'm super happy for him, but I'll never be invited to his wedding. Like that's yeah. a bad thing. <laughs> like he talks to me on the DL. Like he was, you know, when we had that big king freeze here down here in, in Texas. Yes. Oh my Everybody God. was like, like out of power. Yeah. Yeah. So he happened to be here. God, I hope she doesn't listen to this. I, <laughs> he happened to be here during the freeze and he stayed with me. Um, and it, it was really cold. So we stayed in the same bed. Nothing happened. Of course. Yeah. I, I would never disrespect another woman like that regardless, but, um, especially a one that like, especially I would never disrespect him because then it probably would fuck up his relationship. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So nothing happened, of course, but like, she, I mean, he was like, Hey, I'm on the phone. Like, don't talk, you know? And I'm like, I hate this. Oh, I, hate yeah. this. <laughs> I would be hella pissed if I were her, but like, on the other hand, I'm just like, we're not doing anything. He's just here because he doesn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah, but it's here. not, it's not the act it's the omission. So it doesn't matter that like, no you guys aren't doing like, I'm not, this is not me attacking you, but I'm just saying like, oh, I, I don't know why guys are incapable of just like being upfront and honest, because if he's like this with you, I'm guaranteed he's like this with other facets of his life. And like, yeah. they're already starting the marriage on an, on an uneven foot. Totally agree with you a hundred percent. He is just one of those people that doesn't want to step like ever. He wants to just smooth sailing. Sometimes you got to step in the shit to get clean, my friend. So yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, he won't ever listen to this. So I, I don't know if she right. will, but he he won't. Well, if she does, leave him. Yeah, she's <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Not leave him. I'm kidding. Just have a talk with him about being <laughs> honest with you because he and I have had our friendship like steady going for you know ever since he kind of opened up to me about the being formerly in love with me. We've we've talked like pretty regularly, but it's always like when he's away from her and I'm just like, dude, like you're engaged to her. Like, yeah. come on. That's not fair. No, it's really not. And I just, and I feel guilty and I don't know what to do because I don't want to lose him as my friend permanently. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, I don't want to do this to her either. So I don't know. I'm kind of stuck. Yeah. yeah. It's a sticky situation. Yeah. I say you just do nothing and yeah. continue living your life. Yeah. I mean, she, she has yeah. her man. They have a house. They, she has a ring. She, I'm sure she's I'm sure she's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um so okay so Jen I know you just moved to LA and yes. it was like now what about two and a half weeks ago or so yeah it'll be three weeks Thursday okay oh my gosh so are you in culture shock or how, how are you feeling right now oh yeah absolute culture shock I had another moment today I was like oh I live here like I don't have a plane home I live here yeah Oh, and, and just, here, just to tell everybody, you were, you were living in New York. So that's living in New York. Yeah. Yeah. So I like left my family. I left my closest friends to like chase a dream out here. Number one, like there's not an easily accessible bacon, egg and cheese on a bagel. <laughs> the lack of, I feel like, um, so my roommate has a cat and he's feisty and so I'm Italian and a word that's like in our vernacular is scutch, which is just like, it means like annoying person. It comes from like an Italian word, but like in the tri-state area, like scutch is like a known word. And so I've been calling this cat a scutch and I'm like, she's looking at me. Like I just used a foreign word because there's like, just, there's just differences in like, yeah, I don't know. It's just so different. And I, I don't know yet. If I'm cut out for LA. Well, we'll that's see. okay. You have all the time, but I, I wanted to ask you when guys hear that you're from New York, are they just like, oh my God, this is some sort of voodoo magic. Like you're, uh, it's like all of a sudden you become this, you know, sexy. Oh yeah. Like a, a like a new toy. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I definitely think hearing that I'm, I just moved here. They're like fresh meat is yeah. in town. And then when they hear New York, they sort of like one the guy fetish. was like, oh, I, 
Yeah. They're like, I love that New York attitude. And I was like, it's not an attitude, just who I am, but like happy to give it to you. Yeah. You know, like, so yeah, I think, I, I think I'm a shiny new toy. I probably have that. I need to cash in on that probably for, I have like another month or two before that will fade. So I think you have easily like six months is easily. Yeah. yeah. yeah Cause if I'm like, Oh, I just moved here. They, I don't need to say when I can precisely. You know. yeah. Even if you're just like, <laughs> yeah, about three months. So it could be six. No one's yeah. going to know. Not too long ago. How would they never know? know? They'll never know. Never know. How would they know? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's the, I mean, it's the Italian New Yorker thing too. It's like the combination of the two. They just fetishize that a lot. I think it's like this, you know what I wanted to talk about this whole exotic thing. I have been Mm -hmm. talking about this on, for my hinge stuff, because the pickup line for every fucking guy I come across is what ethnicity are you? Or even better, what nationality are you? I'm like, I'm, I have a U.S. passport, (laughs) my nationality. It's like what nationality are you? Are you a U.S. citizen as well? Oh, that's amazing. Like, yeah. yeah. So I always answer it in the most sarcastic way. I literally say like, I'm American and they're like, no, but you look so exotic. Right. And I almost feel like it's becoming like, I don't want to say racist. Cause that's like too much of like a, it's too, too much, but I can't, I feel if any figure out something in between, in between there, but it's like some sort of like again, a fetish about like being exotic or not looking, you know, your typical American, which I don't even know what that is anymore. (laughs) But um, if you look Italian or if you look, cause I I get all kinds of stuff. I get, are you Jewish? Are you Armenian? Are you Greek? Are you Persian? Oh, you're, you're Arabic, you're Lebanese. You're, I'm like, well, you could guess literally anywhere (laughs) in the world. I mean, maybe except for Scandinavia and you know what I mean? But have you, have you experienced that, Jen? Like, do you get guys all the time that are like, you're so exotic? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not so much in New York yeah. because I look like every look like other female else. in New York. <laughs> when I went to school in Boston, I got a lot of like, wait, are you Italian? Are you Indian? Are you like, Ar- uh, I get Persian a lot. I, uh, I get like Persian and Spanish specifically. Yeah. So I used to be like, I'm a stegosaurus. Like, I don't like, I don't know. How do you want me to answer that? Like, I'm not, a sh- I'm very proud. I like to be an Italian American. I think it's like a joke that like an Italian can't be in a conversation with you without telling you they're Italian <laughs> of course. as evidenced by this podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, no guys would love to be like, what are you? I was like, uh, I'm mean? a human being. What are you like? Yeah. So I've gotten it a few times, not as much, but definitely it's happened. So, okay, Nicole, for you, like the other way around, I know that you've been uh, traveling, traveling, yes. and I should say with air quotes, <laughs> Europe, you've been traveling around Europe um, from your, from your phone. <laughs> now tell, <laughs> let's tell everyone your, your goal, really your goal with, with dating international men. <laughs> I want European citizenship so I can spend my summers on a yacht <laughs> in Europe, on like the south of France and Italy, just going around. That's my goal. I like it. You yeah, might like be it. able to get European citizenship depending on your lineage and the country of origin. They all have different roles. Mm-hmm. No, I want a man. I, I'm going to go with a man. <laughs> Maybe okay. we just all need, three of us just need to like go and tear it up in Europe. I feel like that would be smart. Also, also yeah, if I had a child with my Italian stallion, those children would be so beautiful because he's tall, That's if he dark, murder handsome. your vagina <laughs> he with that stallion you. sausage. Oh my God. I literally am like sick over it. Like I'm just like, I've never seen a penis. But big. now like paired with his voice. Oh my God so sexy it's like oh he's so hot I'm like oh daddy talk to me I think you need to just get him to fly you out to Italy first class also don't don't fly coach he said he was gonna come my um 20 year old wants to come visit though he's making plans to come visit the one in Croatia (laughs) okay we like him he's fun (laughs) just a little young but you know um I, I'm glad to see a guy actually make an effort to want to come see me and actually continue conversation is what I'm most shook by. Shook by. I'm like, hot damn. You're like asking, like, you're more mature than like yeah. men my age. Like, 
you know what's I, so crazy is like I I have had people follow through and actually come to visit me and it's blown up like the two times that it's happened. Like one guy was from New York. He um he works for Brooklyn PD and he came to visit me. And we've been talking, like I met him physically in person in um, like late 2018, I want to say, I I forgot. I think I was at a bar and I accidentally stepped on his feet. I think that's our meet cute. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then we just ended up talking and like, he is like really like sexual, but like also super funny. And he was in a relationship for like part of the time. So we had stopped talking and then started talking again and he finally came to visit me and everything was going pretty great. And then, um, he, he got a phone call, I guess something had happened with his dad, like in his health and he had to leave like almost immediately. Like he only was there 24 hours, not even like barely 24 hours. So, but then like when he left and like landed back in New York, he, of course there's an emergency going on. I don't expect anyone to be like, Hey, I landed like yeah. it's fine. I'm not like a baby, but after like 12 hours had gone by, I was expecting to hear like, Something. how's your dad? Ah. Like, is he alive? Like I, you know, anything. Yeah. And he just like, kind of just ghosted. And I was like, what, what the, the hell? hell? And then he, and then after that, like months later, he starts talking to me again. And I'm like, I just, you're like, your bye. signals are confusing and I'm just not into it. <laughs> So yeah, I don't, bye. I just left him on my restricted inbox and I just don't, I just don't mess with it. Yeah. yeah. I just don't understand men. I really don't like, they love to say that women are complicated and it's like, we're very simple to figure yeah. out. Yeah. Like it's so easy. Just like the bar is absolutely on the floor <laughs> it really is. and men, men still manage to not be able to meet it. Like mm-hmm. it's insane. It's genuinely mind boggling. Do you guys find yourself kind of, I want to say, what is the word for that? (sighs) Encouraging the bar to be so low sometimes because you're used to that. For example, you know, a a man 24 hours before the date confirms your date and we're like, wow, what a gentleman, but that's like (laughs) common decency to do that. Yeah. But yet we're surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I went on a date um, two weeks ago and he confirmed the day before with like time and place. And I was like, he's so (laughs) different. He's such a man. Cut flash forward to today, the bar is on the floor. Yeah. And still just like, that was the bare minimum you could do. So remember I was telling you I had this date that I was going to go on? Yes. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. because No? No, because I messaged him and I was like, this is, okay, backstory this is a guy that I had dated maybe like last summer sometime and we had gone on you know I would say six seven dates like maybe more than that we hung out a bunch of times got along really well had the same political views um vibed out really well had the same interests like tv wise we watched the whole season uh, a whole scene of season of American Horror Story together and right as we were getting to the part where we were probably going to switched to boyfriend, girlfriend, he got like cold feet and was like, I'm really depressed and I'm not ready for a relationship. And I just, you know, I really, I'm not good enough for you right now. And he was like very kind about it. So I was like, look, you're going through it, whatever, no big deal. So we remained like friendly. And then recently he had reached out to me saying he wanted to spend time with me. So I said, I'd be happy to go out on a date with you. So we set the time and place for, sorry, we set the time, I guess, not the place for this past Saturday. So Saturday rolls around and I was like, Hey, do you still remember my address or do you need it? And he's like, Oh, I thought, I thought we were going to go to eat. And I was like, so you want to go eat in two different cars and then come back and watch a movie at my house. And yeah in two cars that doesn't make sense especially because I already know I already know him right he's already been to my house like 10 times yeah so he's like and so he like kind of hesitates to respond I was like just to confirm like this is a date like because I was forward with it I was I set my boundary and I was like just to confirm like this is a date this isn't like a hangout or whatever he's like oh my bad I didn't know it was a official date and I'm like what what the what did you think it was? Yeah, a hangout. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know if he was planning on getting married or what, but I immediately was like, I hope you understand that I have to set my boundaries and I can't spend time with someone who's not um, like committed to going on a date with yeah. me. And he's like, no, I totally understand. And that was the end of the combo. Wow. <laughs> no. <laughs> but at least it weeds out the bad ones real quick. Like if you set your boundaries like that, it just weeds them out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. Like what is it like a hangout? We're not in high school. I yeah. Know. I hate that word. So do you want to hang out? No. Well, like even if it wasn't um, hang out, you guys can still drive to dinner together. Like I know. Also, it's, it's like if we're gonna ha- okay, if we're hanging out, like no, I want to hang out with my friends because I don't have to wear makeup and I can keep on my cozies and I can be yeah. my full self. Yeah. We're not hanging out. Like it's either a date and I'm putting on some glam and I'm dressing up and I'm putting effort into the way I look, or we're not going out. Like right. we're not doing the happy medium. No. Because it's convenient for them because if you don't put the label date on it, then there's no pressure to say that, oh, are we dating? Just grow up. The Spice Girl said, I want a man, not a boy who thinks he can. And that is my dating mantra. It's just like, there are no more men. There are only boys who think they're men. And (sighs) I'm sorry. I'm so heated because I just like, I'm waiting for a man to text me and I'm getting angrier the longer I'm sitting here. (laughs) Dude, I totally feel your pain. There's nothing worse than those days where you're like, you're like, your phone is like here and you're just like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you like me? And you're just not a big texter. You don't like texting. Or are you indifferent about me? Because Uh, yeah, anyway. No, I totally, I totally agree with you. And then of course, like there's, there is a one, there's one guy right now who really likes me, who actually is in LA funnily enough. And he's a doctor and he's, I met, I met him on TikTok. Yeah. 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 He's great. But like, he only likes to talk on the phone. Like his texting. No. I, I, oh, I kind of love that though. I, I know, but like, no, I, okay. No, no, no. Okay. I'm in the middle <laughs> about it. I'm in the middle about it because sometimes I need to fucking unwind. Cause as you guys know, when you're talking all the time and creating and like being on camera yeah. and like on the phone and all day, like you don't want to be on the fucking phone. Like we were on the phone for seven hours like seven hours the other night and I didn't even like realize it because it oh was my fun. god yeah but I don't want to do that every night y'all like I like I really don't once is good like I don't like want to be on the worst nightmare yeah like literally I, and he I told nightmare. him I'm I said you are a texter I even said that like right out to him he laughed because he has a good sense of humor about it but I was just like I cannot I cannot be talking to you on the phone. Like I'm eating dinner or, you know, like I, sometimes I eat dinner and I'm catching up on work or I'll be um, watching like one Netflix show that I have the time for. And it, he wants to talk on the phone and just like, he doesn't initiate the conversation. He just like sits there and just like, is, oh, that like, gives me the chill. Oh, that's different. Like if yeah. it's an engaging, like two way phone conversation, but if you have to like also hold the conversation, it's like, just let me be. Yeah. I'm, and I'm so bad with being like, I gotta go. So I'd be like, hey, can you say you have to go soon? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. And actually the other day I was like, hey, can we just hang up and you can send me a voice memo like yeah. on, through <laughs> iMessage. And, and it's so the same we, shit, dude. Yeah, yeah we, we did. No, but we did that. And that was better because I could like. I love voice notes. Yeah. All four me voice notes. Me too. And that's it's why whenever talking I get on the it, phone without the paint. <laughs> whenever I get the green bubble, I'm like, I can't voice note you. <laughs> What, what no. now? What do I do now? I'm a green face- bubble. Can't even Ugh. FaceTime. No. Yeah, and then they're like, "Oh, we can get on WhatsApp." I'm like, "No." WhatsApp is for my European boyfriends. Come exactly. on, no, no, no. that's only for You're men just- that are out of the country. You're American. You don't deserve my WhatsApp. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Plus, I'm about checking my WhatsApp. I need to be better about it. Yeah, I turn I don't all my not- app anymore. I turn uh, all my notifications off. So when I check my phone, I'm surprised if I have a text message or WhatsApp uh-huh. or Instagram. And I'm like, ooh, I got text. See, Jen, that's a good tactic for you right now with, for, for, for this guy. Like you should just um, silence his text, like swipe it and put the little moon and then yeah. it'll be a surprise when you open your Yeah, phone. it's my favorite thing. I Everybody. Yeah, I just, I want somebody to want to text me Girlfriend, or like talk I do to too. me <laughs> do too. Same. and it's like I thought we had such a good connection and I'm like okay is my can I even trust my intuition like is my gut just broken like I don't know anymore who I don't know anymore I I, I am a firm believer in the fact that it's not you it's him like for yeah. sure <laughs> like 100%. yeah because I'm amazing so yeah I, I just don't get it 
you, you both are the whole package. So I think that anybody who can't get it together for you is just not ready for you. That's, and that's how I feel about myself too. I feel like those who want me, but can't deal with it are just not ready. Like they're, and that's okay. Like, that's fine. They're not for me. Yeah. It sucks. Like, do I cry on Christmas Eve? Yeah. Every year, every year. I I cry myself to sleep like probably once a week. Oh, once a week? No, I would totally cuddle with you. Oh, my it love. It sucks because I feel like we have so much love to give somebody and I just don't understand. I was having this conversation with a friend today. Like, I don't understand why it seems so easy for so many other people. And I just like routinely fail or like nobody is like banging down my door or like wanting to date me or, or us. It's like, what the, f- then what are you looking for? Yeah. Well, I agree. I've been divorced for like 10 years or something like that. I got married super fucking young and some people are getting divorced and they, they are finding the love of their life within a year or two. And I'm like, I've been divorced for 10, 10. My ex, we, when we broke up, we were going back and forth and he ended up getting with the girl. He was like, don't worry about blah, blah, blah. Oh Lord. Yeah, he was. I would never date her. She's in my band. Flash forward, they're now married together. And I'm like, you told me you didn't want to find someone, you needed to be alone, but then you find someone. And here I am, like, ooh, I want a boyfriend, but can't get one. I'm like, how does that fucking work? Is this the one with the the one that said that he doesn't need your nudes? That's the one. Yeah. Okay. So let's tell, tell the audience <laughs> about that because I find that whack. He was the one who uh, was like, I don't need your nudes because I have the real thing in person. And he also laughed the first time I put on lingerie and surprised him. So there's that. He did apologize, but scarred for a hot minute. About yeah. That. But yeah. Yeah. And the Hawaiian guy who scarred you from I love you. We don't <laughs> like him either. Well, not I love you. Just shooting my shot. And or shooting you shot. Wait, which is no. You did say I love you to someone. Who was it? I forgot. Was it to my ex? Okay. The one because we were together for like three years. But okay. yeah, the Hawaiian man who at the bus stop in London <laughs> looked stop. at me and goes on Edgware Road and goes. <laughs> oh my god! I was in a leopard fur coat, and he <laughs> looks at me and goes, Nicole, you're a really cool girl. I just don't like you like that. And All right, R.I.P. Like you hooked up with me, like go f- yourself, like and then flash yeah. forward the rest of senior year, we hooked up like on and off. So I'm like, so, so I will never shoot my shot with a man. Again. Okay, so did you sleep with him because you thought that that would fix stuff? My ex, a hundred percent. No, the, well, yeah, anybody. I mean, in yeah. your younger, in your twenties, like, did you? Guys oh. Do that? Yes. When me and my ex broke up, I thought sex would get him back. So I would just text him and be like, no, let's just be friends. Like we can just f- like, yeah. I have no feelings. And meanwhile, I'm like, yes, it's going to make it work. Like blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The f- right. Nicole. And <clears throat> Jesus. Yeah. God. It's like, oh. we just use sex as a tool. Like you, like we all love gift giving as our love language. Right. So we yeah. thought that mm-hmm. somehow giving sex to these men would make them love us. Yeah. I'm like, he could still feel the connection. He's going to love me. Dear God. It makes me cringe. It makes me cringe too. And I definitely, I I definitely thought, you know, that if I didn't have a man, I wasn't a woman, like somehow that defined me as a woman. So I would constantly try to buy them stuff or do stuff for them or make their life easier in some way. And were they doing anything for me? Absolutely not. Like, was I even coming during sex? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely. No. I, my one psycho ex that lived in Chicago, he was insane and he had a trust fund, but then he'd be like, I have no money for food. I need you to order me dinner tonight. And I would like Postmates him dinner. Meanwhile, I'm like a broke ass college student. And then he's like, you didn't buy me dessert. Like, go. And I'm like, I'm sorry. (gasps) Why do we do this? I'm like, why am I so like, he's telling me he's other girls and I'm like oh he'll love me because I'm being like nurturing eh, Jesus so nasty it's like vomitable <laughs> did you do that too Jen you're shaking your head like you're over it right I now. <laughs> just feel like I used to just like sleep with guys knowing that like 
they only wanted to hook up with me thinking, well, if I hook up with them enough, they're going to wake up one day and realize <laughs> I'm fantastic. Yeah. Like, I, I think it was like, a, I'll wear them down. Oh yeah. Because I didn't have the like self-love to think like, you shouldn't have to wear somebody down. Yeah. Like they should either be like upfrontly yes about you or like you, like it took me forever to realize like I shouldn't be giving an ounce of energy anymore to someone that's like not giving it back. That's why like right now I'm like, I'm waiting for this man to text me, but I'm also kind of like, I haven't heard from you since Saturday. So I'm going to like, I feel like for me, my boundary is like, are you a good texter or are you just indifferent about me? Like Mm -hmm. it's only been two dates, but I know that I'm interested in a third. So like, if you're not just tell me that, like, there's no, you know, just be upfront about it. You don't need to kill me with silence. Just tell me. So sorry. I'm like so heated. I can tell. I can tell your face is like, you're like because I your really head. genuinely felt like a connection with him that I have never felt with anyone before. And I really was like, oh, this is going to be something. And for it to turn out the same way that like all the other insignificant turned out, I'm just like, what am I doing wrong? Welcome <laughs> to therapy. therapy. <laughs> yeah. And all my tarot TikToks are like, he's coming back. He's going to text you. He's your soulmate. I'm sensing air sign. And I'm like, okay, great. But like, (laughs) I don't know. know. The answer is I know nothing, but I know enough now that you don't need to sleep with somebody to get them to like you. I also think within, if you've had two successful dates, to me, that is enough to know if you want to develop a relationship with someone. Like, totally agree. Yeah. Like two successful dates in a row, like. I've never I really had that, so I wouldn't yeah. know. So, like, I can't really relate. <laughs> I can't really say. So. I feel like when I was in my, like, I would say my mid-20s, I had, well, actually, high school to mid-20s, I had, like, successful relationships, like, successful small, many, like, long-term things, like, a bunch, and guys were never hesitant to commit to me at that point in time, and now that I've gotten older, like the past five years, it's been absolutely impossible to get anybody to commit. And I'm like, I'm not even looking to get married and have babies or whatever right away. Like that's not in the, in the plans. Like I literally just want someone to like hold and love and give my love to and spend my time with and like bring on family vacay. Like that's really like what I'd like to do, but they just, I think they're the ones that are out here, like in my dating pool, I guess, or the ones that I've found are just like, not, they're just not ready for it. And you know, what's annoying too, whenever, like, I feel like some people say, well, you're being too picky, like maybe adjust your standards, but I'm like, but you didn't have to do that to find the person you're with. So why do you think I need to do that to find someone? Like, I don't agree with like, you should be less picky or like change your expectations or your standards. I'm like, you didn't have to do that. No. Why do I have to do that? I don't, I don't believe I have to do that. And I know it's going to hurt until I finally find that person, but it's just taking so damn long. (laughs) I know. I know. I agree. I fully agree with you. Um, I, I just think that, you know, the, the old adage of you find them when you're not looking like is because I feel like you do, you do, if that's when you're maybe like 25, like when you get to Uh 30, it's like, it's like, you need to actively be participating. Like my eggs are dying. Sorry. (laughs) I am looking. I feel like there's been times when I haven't looked and when I've been looking and neither work. So I'm like, right now I'm just going to do me. And if that's sending nudes to my Italian (laughs) stallion, then fine. Like, yeah until whatever comes along I'm just gonna do me and whatever Mr. Wright will come along at knock on wood so (laughs) oh my god speaking okay so is the Italian guy younger or just the other guy no he's older than me so I'm like he's like a perfect package okay if you want something sexy and Italian to say to him I'd be more than happy yes to oblige it's funny because you know, obviously I grew up and learned Italian from my nonna, from uh-huh. my grandmother and my mom. And so they never taught me, you know, sex words. Like, <laughs> obviously they never taught me how to say P word, <laughs> your meow, meow. And, um, <laughs> how do and, you say, I want to f- you so badly. Okay. So there's a bunch of ways to say, f- um, <laughs> so you, <laughs> you could say like, so fare, fare l'amore is like make love, fare l'amore. And yeah. then like there's trombare, like 
trombare is like to ti voglio is I want you um so like, oh, like that yeah yeah you could say like voglio yeah scopare is another way to say I would say voglio I'll text it to you but it's like yes. voglio, voglio scoparti or something like that uh, I want to fuck you <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like it's really there's a bunch of different ways to say fuck I guess I don't know I love I, that. Love that. I want a man with speaking a foreign accent whispering sweet nothings into my ear yeah it's In hot the- in their accent oh his voice is so hot when he played it i just was like replay 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 and you're like how do i do this help how do i do this sos <laughs> <laughs> on your on your side <laughs> thank yeah, god you didn't hear that so like when i was in this relationship with this italian guy who didn't speak english it was like when we had sex it was awkward sometimes because I, like he would be talking to me which was hot but then i would be like i want to say things back but like he won't understand me <laughs> So I had to learn it eventually. I was like, how do you say, like, how do you say, how do you say like suck your, you're giving head yeah. or whatever? Like, how do you say that? And they had like, 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 so to say suck your is like fare pompino. Like that's the word for it. Pompino. It's not hot. Oh, it's no. So it's such a grody like, word. I'm like, fare pompino, pompino, pompino. It's gross. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> So then I just like crack up. Same thing with fighting in Italian too. Like when we would get in fights, I would end up just cussing him out in English. And he was like, I don't understand you. And I was like, I don't care. You know? So it's hard to be in a relationship with a guy with another language. At least your guy speaks a little English. That's great. (laughs) That's good to know. Even if he only sex in English, I feel like that's all you need, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Seriously. That's really true. Let's talk about the podcast a little bit. Talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's talk about hotter in person. Um, your your baby, your podcast. Let's talk about the inception of how it came to be, and then how you executed it. Yeah. Um, we. Like, you know. I'll, I'll start it. Um, Nicole and I. So my best friend from high school is Nicole's best friend from college. So we always kind of tangentially knew each other. We've also both hooked up with the same guy. So that overlaps. And then during quarantine or like this year, we just kind of like started our own like TikTok liking pod. Like we just started liking videos and then like we would send them comment on things and then it escalates to DMs. And eventually we were just going back and forth, like lamenting about our pathetic dating lives. And we're like, (laughs) this would be a podcast. Like this is so good. And then we would like throw around titles and... Then we like, I think I said, or Nicole was like, yeah, I just look better in person. Like I'm hotter in person. And then it was like, oh, there it is. And so we had plans to launch it. And then we made all the social medias. And then all of a sudden, like I look one day and there's another hotter in person podcast. And I was like, this did not exist. This did not exist last week. What? So some girl like had a podcast with a different name and then she all of a sudden changed it. And I'm of the theory that she definitely like saw our social media somehow and like changed her name because she thought it sounded good. The best but is so. she like tags oh. stuff and she'll sometimes tag us. And I'm like, she's so dumb. You're not even tagging your own fucking podcast. Oh my God. <laughs> no, her. she could be very nice. But I'm just true. kind of like, it's. <laughs> It's weird that like our like stuff kind of like launched and then she created her. So then it was kind of like, Nicole, we need to record this yeah. week. <laughs> we like, we didn't Nicole. think it through. We just kind of were like, we're doing it. And then all of a sudden we were like, okay, I guess oh, f- now we have to do this every day. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you, did you just like watch YouTube videos or how, like, how did you figure out how to put together a podcast? Thank God for Jen. Jen kind of just figured it out. We're like, oh, we'll get a mic and we'll record on Zoom. And then Jen does well, I'm a writer. Stuff. <laughs> I'm a writer. So I think in terms of story structure. So it's very like we need an opening, a beginning, middle, end. We need natural segues between topics. Like it can't just be like chat. Like you have to somehow bring the audience on the journey with you. Right. Um, and then I knew how to do like editing from film school. So yeah, it kind of just, we kind of just jumped off the cliff and we're like, we'll figure it out on the way. Yeah. Like, like we'll figure Bella, it out on the way Bella down. and Louise, that. Sh- yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Cause I've had this equipment like all set up for literally one year and I just started recording six weeks ago or maybe seven weeks ago. And I've had, I had like a failure to launch thing. Maybe it's like 
one of those like imposter syndrome, fear of success, like all that yeah. psycho psychology babble. I don't really know which one it was, but I just was like so scared to start. And then I ended up talking to my friend who also has a podcast and she recommended that I hire a podcast company to help me with what I needed to get jump started because I want, yeah. I'm such a type a, like with my, with my work, not necessarily yeah. always in my personal life, but definitely with my work. And I wanted it to be like, I wanted it to be, you know, perfect branding. Like the branding was, was consistent and everything looked the same and it was, you know, executed correctly. That, I think that's where I was hesitating. Cause I just, I, I should have yeah. done like y'all, I should have done like you. And just like, I should have just better done than perfect for me, like at all times. And so, but for some reason, I just didn't, I yeah. couldn't do it. So here I am a year later. Um, I'm hoping to launch it now. It'll be like, hopefully September 7th or 14th. Ooh, one of those. Nice. Yeah, I know. And I like, I'm really wanting to put you guys like either like, I think five, fifth or sixth. Show. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I want to like warm them up before I like, you know, <laughs> go straight to raw the, dog. The yeah. Here's yeah. the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Popino, yeah, I know, right? If my mom listens, she's gonna <laughs> absolutely die. A lot yeah. of strategy, I think, involved. You yeah. know, I think there it's six one way, half a dozen the other. I think when you're way more prepared up front and you get all of your ducks in a row, it yeah. probably makes for like easier down the road. I think we are now at a point where we're like, okay, we need to figure some of this out. Like yeah. we need to like, how do you get sponsors? Like what we need to make, what is our branding? Like, yeah. So I think it just depends. I think we were just like cooped up and like really just needed an outlet and just kind of were like, all right. But I definitely am usually, I can be a very like, I need to have it all ready. I think I'm such an, I need to have it all ready before I go person that I now try to actively be like a, just jump, figure it out. Like the anxiety, it won't be that, but, you know, like to Ooh. get my anxiety. I think it's like, I have to force myself to do that. Yeah. And I think too, if we waited, I kind of start sometimes getting in my head being like, am I stupid for starting a podcast? Like so many other people out there doing it. Like, who am I to think like, I'm going to be able to quit my job and do this full time. So it's like, you get such in like your mind too. So I'm kind of glad we just started. Cause then I kind of would be like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, and you both are excellent at it. And I agree. Like you, like Jen, you kind of steer the conversation and then, and you have like, you create the structure and you provide, you know, funny anecdotes. And then Nicole, like you come in and kind of expand on everything that Jen has kind of like put into place and you can kind of tell, weave the story and tell the story. Like, I think you guys have a really cool dynamic going and it's, it's very listenable. I don't know if that's a word, but I made it up. <laughs> um, but I, it's very, to me, it's easy to listen to because A, you guys are so hilarious and relatable and B it's like there don't you ever listen to some people and you just immediately have to turn it off because it's jarring to your soul yeah like, I just it gives can't. me or sometimes it gives me anxiety and I'm yes. like I have to turn this off uh -huh. right yeah now. but like you guys are soothing enough to where like I could chill and like be in bed and like listen to it so I Love like that. that yeah that's what we want I feel like yeah. I, we've gotten some feedback where people are like it was like just drinking a glass of wine with my girlfriends I was like yes. That's what we want. Put it on while you're driving. Put it on while yeah. you're cleaning. Like we don't need to be the main focus of your moment. <laughs> yeah. But like we're here to support you. Yes. Yes, exactly. And I feel like so many women our age and younger too and older probably go through what we're going through and never talk about it. Uh, yeah. They're so embarrassed to talk about the fact that they got shot the down when they asked a guy out. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. And two, it's like our age, no one really talks about like me and Jen are like our only single friends. And it's like everyone, you know, you talk about when you're younger, but once you hit your thirties, people aren't talking about as much the struggles of being single when all your friends are getting married on their second kid. And it's like it's such a different than when you're in your twenties and your friends are and you're single, you know, cause now it's yeah. a little bit more serious. And I found like, I haven't really found a podcast where you kind of click with that or isn't the same or they're always like oh it's so easy to go on a date and I'm like oh, yourself <laughs> like it's, it's really not, not. <laughs> yeah it's really not at all um yeah my hinge uh one month like subscription was up as of like two days ago so I don't think I'm gonna pay for that again I think I'm 
That's like where you can like get as many matches yeah. as you Jen want. Jen just to did that, right? I boosted my hinge <laughs> last night. Did you? Did you get it? And I good got stuff. I got 60 likes, so I'm still weeding through 60? them, which is 60, but it's not as much like when I boosted Damn, in New girl. York. I boosted in New York and gotten like for 24 hours. Like you, I was like, I'm gonna get hundreds here. Like this is, but so I, I got some. And then I was talking to this one guy and he was like, I was like, oh yeah, I'm new to LA. Like, what are some places I need to go to? And he just like, that's Can't my wait. opening for you yeah. to be like, oh, I have oh, a favorite yeah. like taco spot. Like, let's go. He was like, oh, cool. Yeah, you're so new. Yeah, I know some good places. Here, text me. No, oh. I'm, I'm not going to text you. I'm going to unmatch you. You're, I, it's too much effort. It's too much work now for this. I hate when they immediately go to give me your number right away. It really, I hate it because I, it puts me in a position of either I continue, either I give him my number and we continue probably to talk for two minutes and then yeah. he's probably not going to talk anymore or you say no. And then it's like, it fizzles. So it's like, yeah, you're basically yeah. when I ask like that early. And you're like, how do you know you want my number? Literally three sentences in. I literally I don't know. Like, Unless you, you really set up my- drinks and stuff right off the bat that I'm like, yeah, fine take my number but if we're just gonna sit here and be like oh how was your day I'm like go yourself bye yeah but I and here's the thing it's like it's always the same thing like I don't even drink it's not because I'm sober or against alcohol I just don't like it yeah so when they're like let's go for a drink and I'm like okay well my profile states that I don't drink but I understand (laughs) that you don't read so um I don't drink like Like, bye yeah I know I just really bars on the floor like just take a notice of what is in like why can't they even just read the profile <laughs> so I'm, I'm drinking and I'm heated like <laughs> no you're right Lear, the bar is low like just read my profile like it's all there like I literally Insane. even have on there that I don't like I, I don't even like coffee right so if people if they me ask either. me yeah I don't like I don't care for it and so I put on there like you know I've don't care for coffee or whatever. And, um, they're like, okay, well, how about coffee instead of drinks? I'm like, again, I don't drink that either. And then they think I'm being difficult. I'm like, I put it all out there for you to see before you match with me. (laughs) I just think that this will all be really good for our memoirs one day. And one day we will be happy and in relationships, but it's, it's a slog to get there. It's a lot. It's a minefield. Gotta kiss all them frogs to get that prince. (laughs) Yeah. And then of course, like we watch movies and we're like, are you, I don't know if how you guys are, Nicole, you probably don't give a shit. You're probably like, I like eyes of steel and no, no tears, but maybe Jen, but like, I cry like at the romance in movies. If I'm like like, on my period, I'll start tearing up. If it's like a cheesy rom-com. Yes. I have been there. Okay. Okay. I was like, Nicole probably (laughs) doesn't give a shit, but like (laughs) maybe Jen. Oh, I books have an emotional like, like books, range yeah. of like four to like eight. And yeah. if I am lower than a four or higher than eight, I'm crying. It yeah. does, I cry so easily. It doesn't even matter what it is. Yeah. It could be a car commercial. Like I'm, I'm a weeper. I cry. I am, I am too. I don't, I was watching this Netflix show called The Politician. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's actually like Emmy nominated. It's really good. It's got like Gwyneth Paltrow, Bette Midler, Ben Platt, who was in um, Pitch Perfect. He's like a singer, like a really good singer. Yeah. Um, it's got, I forgot who else. There's got a bunch of like really cool people in it. And it wasn't even like a tearjerker type of show. But I, when I was watching it, I was like, and I was taking my pillowcase because I didn't have tissues. I ran out. So I was taking my pillowcase and I was like, my eyelash extensions are going to come off. <laughs> I was like holding it to my eyeballs. I mean, I was PMSing, but still, I would still have cried. So yeah. No, that was how me. when I finished Akatar, the I think it was the third book, I was bawling my eyes out at like 2 a.m. I was like, no, I think I need to read these books. Oh my god, Boring. you have to. I think I'm please join the cults. I would yes. love to. First one's good. First one's good. Second one is amazing. Out of this world. Oh my my friend got me the signed book and I freaked out for my birthday. Yes. Oh, that's so nice. That's such a good gift. Yeah. Wow. Is their love language also gift giving? Because that's a great gift. <laughs> right. Great gift. Um, the other day I was talking to this guy about his love language and he was like, I like, what did he say? 
he's like, it's always, they always like, I know it's always physical touch for them almost all the time, but I feel like they want to throw in another one before the physical touch because they want to like clarify with you that they're not always about physical touch. Yeah. Like the, as a disclaimer, but he was like, yeah, it's quality time and physical touch. And like, as he was saying it, I was mouthing it to myself and physical touch. Like I knew he was going to say it. <laughs> And I just feel like men are so like one dimensional when it comes to dating. Sometimes like, it's just ridiculous. I can predict everything they're, they're going to say from your exotic to my love language is physical touch. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so predictable. <laughs> it's oh, so boring too. I'm like, oh, physical touch. You like to be hugged. Great. Yeah. Great. We don't, we all know you like it. Like, you got a personality Don. Your like, dick likes on. to be hugged. You yeah. don't like to be hugged. <laughs> Yeah, your we Pepino, all know you like blowjays. Your baby Pepino wants to be hugged. Ah! I'm, I'm out. <laughs> you were so cute. <laughs> I feel like physical touch is fake one. Like physical touch isn't real. Like I think everybody likes to be shown affection. Well, there's some people that I know don't like to be touched. Like that's the thing. I don't. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, but do you like to be touched, Nicole, like in a relationship, like hugged and all of that? Down the line, I just touching in general makes me uncomfortable like I don't hug my friends my family like it's just not me like it takes me a bit to get down to like oh yeah let's hug kiss whatever I mean I'm all for but like <laughs> you're like you just do not touch, touch. okay <laughs> okay so like no so like note to self when we, when you and I meet like I'll refrain from the hugs until you <laughs> approach me with the hug like when I go on dates, the part that gives me like, I'm an anxious person, but it gives me the most anxiety is when I have to say hi to them. And when I have to say bye to them, because I'm like, do I have to hug? Like, it makes me physically like, that's what I freak out about. Like, I do not want to hug you. Like if I get there first, do I have to stand up and hug you? Like it makes me, some people kiss you on the cheek and I'm just like, I'm going to kill myself. Is it one or two kisses? Like I... <laughs> I literally work myself up for so long before like that part just I'm like I wish I could text them and be like please let's just not hug maybe you should I mean like honestly in the I mean <laughs> in this in the spirit of honesty and in boundaries maybe you should like maybe you should just be like please hey, don't touch me. I'm not really down for hugs like when we first meet I don't know is that weird I guess I would make it I don't know weird. I'm like I don't know just please don't touch me. That's why, like, if they're like, oh, I'll pick you up. I'm like, uh, no, car hug's really uncomfortable. I'd rather oh. die. So. Well, maybe, but you have the console in between you. So maybe it's, like, less likely to be a hug at that <laughs> situ- in that situation. <laughs> I'm a hugger, though. Like, oh. I, like, my family. I'm a hug slut. Yeah, my family is all about touchy-feely. Like, we massage each other's backs. Like, we hug. We say, I love you. And I know, Jen, your family is like that, too, oh, right? Yeah. I love being touched. Hug me, squeeze me, kiss me, choke me, whatever you want to do. Choke <laughs> me, yes. We like the choking. <laughs> no, I just, yeah, I, I think, but that's why I'm like, okay, what? Nicole's the, the exception, I suppose. But like, I don't know. I just feel like, no, but you're right in that. Like once you get feelings for someone, you like that. So that's what I mean. Like when you're dating someone and you feel something for them, I feel like everybody likes to be shown affection. Yeah. That's why I'm like, when it's like physical touch is my number one, I'm like, no. then you don't have a personality. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not. I feel like they're, they're just um, so one dimensional when they give an answer like that, because truly, I think, I think what I'm hearing is you like quality time. Like, that's what I'm hearing when I hear them say physical touch. Like that means spending time together, like physical time together, yeah. but yeah. you know, you have to translate everything. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's great. You really do. <laughs> I really do. Well, um, I think we could talk easily for another six hours. Seriously, but, I can't believe yeah. it's been an hour. I looked I at my clock and I was like, what? I know what happened here. Uh, but <laughs> I do want to ask you guys one more question each. Okay. Um, so Nicole, we'll start with you. If you saw your 20 year old self and you had the ability to talk to her and tell her one or two things, you know, not, not give her a hug because, you know, maybe you wouldn't want to, <laughs> but, um, if you just could talk to her, what is, what is something that you would say to her? I would say never move anywhere for a man, like no matter how much you love them or care for them, never move anywhere for a man. Um, That's good advice. Unless like you're getting married difference, but I, yeah, never move for a man. And I mean, I lived up my college years, but like really live it up. 
like yeah because your parents credit card goes away pretty fast (laughs) that's so true I always think about that it up and I always tell like my cousins like study abroad like just travel like Like, just literally when you're young it's such a different experience than once you get older like you're just free and young in a different country like just travel yes and never move for a man yeah Yeah. and never move for a dude um how about you Jen I feel like I would tell her two things I would say don't be afraid to bet on yourself I think I lived in like a fear scarcity mindset for a really long time and I feel like now at thir- at almost 30, I'm living how I wish I would have lived in my like early 20s, like with just taking risks and betting on myself. And the second one is never let a man make you feel like you are not worthy of being loved. Because I feel like I would just let their actions make me think, oh, like maybe this is as good as it gets. Maybe I don't deserve what my friends have. Maybe all I'm ever going to get is the guy who just wants to f- me. So yeah, so that's a big one. That is a huge one. My personal one is very similar and it's never let anyone dictate what you think about your, your own self. Like that's basically yeah. mine is, is and essentially that's the same thing. Um, yeah. But even, but even other women too, there's been other women throughout my life that have really with my mind because I sometimes take more offense to the women over yeah. the men. Yeah, totally. Now, now, especially, I think before I probably would have taken more more of a hit from if it was a guy but because it was always about my appearance like oh she's really fat or whatever and then I would just die but now I'm just like I don't care what you think but if a woman says something bad I'm like oh no right yeah why don't you like me (laughs) now I feel like the older we're getting it's about letting the voice your opinion inside your head be louder than the opinions outside of it that oh oh right hit you with a little therapy (laughs) yeah that's what my therapist says to me all the time but no yeah it's about making sure that what you think of you is the loudest voice for you. That is an amazing note to end on. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. I know that you've taken a lot of your time out for me and it's, it's been so fun. I really hope that we can do this in person. Yeah. I was going to say, you should come, come to LA. We'll do an, an, a live, we'll do a live, uh, (laughs) <laughs> recording or something yeah I, I I mean definitely everyone go check out their podcast and go check out their Instagram all their social media um Nicole and Jen are doing big things and it's only going to go up from here so again thank you guys and I thank I'll you. talk to you so soon well guys that's it for today's episode of the luxury dropout podcast I hope you enjoyed my chat with Nicole and Jen they are such fun girls to chat with and I honestly think I'm gonna go visit them and we'll just have to have a recap of everything that we spoke about and really do it up big so thank you to those ladies please go hit that subscribe button like comment share this video if you think it's share worthy and if you are listening please go ahead and leave me a review it really helps me out i really appreciate everything that you guys do i love hearing your comments and questions for the next coming podcast for the upcoming podcast and if you want to check out hotter in person it will be linked for you to visit i think you would uh, if you enjoyed this episode you will absolutely enjoy their podcast for sure So until next time, I am sending you love, stay well, and I will see you soon. That's a wrap for this episode of The Luxury Dropout. Make sure to visit stephaniejoplin.com to find all of Steph's episodes, including full podcast descriptions and photos of her guests. Until next time, besties.